Okay, so now we've got this little React app, but it doesn't really do anything. So let's actually add message functionality and UI. So we're going to start with the UI. So in components, we're going to make a folder called channel. And this will contain everything we need, every component to do with the channel. So we have a text-based channel.tsx. We have a, a message box. Okay, we'll just start with a text-based channel and move along. So SFC, enter. This will generate a stateless functional component or function component. And we're just going to call this text-based channel. Okay, so in this channel, what we're going to do... So instead of using .fc in app.tsx, we are also using that. This is deprecated. We can just use function component. And also app doesn't really have props. Now props are what you give to the function. So for example, this div has a property of class name. And because div is a standard HTML element, it, we don't need to specify like class name in here. It already has that stuff for div, and it's not a separate React component. But there we go. We we don't need any properties for app because we don't need to customize its functionality. There we go. And in here, we're just going to have function component, text-based channel props. Are we going to have any props in text-based channel? Nope, we're not. We don't need any. Okay, so we're going to return a h1 for now, text channel works or something, and then in app.tsx, get rid of this trash, off it goes, and then let's put te text-based channel. Now in React, there's a, we can use components as self-closing, so if we put a slash on the end, and then press tab. We're using Emmet, which makes HTML a lot simpler, and it also works in React files. Cool. So text-based channel refers to this. Now, text channel works, brilliant. Great start. Okay, so now we've done that. We want to actually display like a text channel, really. So, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a div. Now, when we use dot and then tab, it creates a div automatically with a class. So, dot means class when we're referring to CSS selectors and emmet. Hashtag means ID, but we won't really be using many IDs. We don't need to. So, you can do like like that. But there we go. We'll get onto that later. So we're going to have a h full. There we go. A dot h full, that is. And then we're going to have a flex. So we're going to have height full, display flex, flex call. Okay. So for now, we're just going to have a div. And then we're going to style this div with Tailwind CSS. And inside this div, remember React elements need to return one parent wrapper. I just call it a wrapper that contains other elements to be returned. Now in React, you can also do something like this. Now if you don't have any, if you just want to like return a bunch of items like that, you can actually wrap it into these little empty tags called JSX fragments. They're actually called JSX fragments, but you use it like this, basically. So, we're not actually going to use fragments, I was just showing you that, if you were interested, because we're probably going to use them later on. That's the plan anyway. Now, we have a div, I, I don't know why I typed that, but inside this div, we're going to have 
an ID of messages. Now we can type div hashtag messages. What do we get? We get a div with ID of messages. We can also insert comments because why not? We're using React inside a re inside a JSX kind of expression. We can type text channel header because this is where the header for the text channel is going to go. And I'll show you what that looks like soon. And we're going to have messages. Now we're going to map the messages. So we can return an array of JSX elements. So I can demonstrate that. Let's let's do this. So div, this is just a demo. One, two. What's going to happen? So obviously this is an array here. So we've got an array of two JSX elements. And JSX elements are just are just plain JavaScript objects, basically. Everything in JavaScript is an object, pretty much. A JSX element is literally a, a DOM element. <laughs> and that's what it represents. But we don't need to get into the quantum physics of JSX. We just want to see that we've rendered two items. Brilliant. Now, that shows that rendering multiple elements is possible. Now, if we return this array, it's, it's not going to work. Nope. There we go. So, here, we are actually going to have a an array of messages. And we're going to map each message. And for now, we're just going to have a div when I can type it. So this returns a div in an arrow function. And this div, so we have a message. We're going to make an array here just for demo. We're going to have a const messages array. And for now, we're just going to have like an object content high and then content uh, high again. I don't know. Um, there we go. So we have message, message, messages here. So inside this div, all we need to do is type m.content and we will see. Guess what we're going to see? Hi, hi again. Brilliant. Now, there's an issue with this setup. Each child in the list should have a unique key prompt. Why is that? Well, Keys help React identify which items that have changed, are added or removed. Keys should be given to the elements inside the array to give them a stable identity. So basically, React can't dis differentiate elements in an array, so they need the key attribute, like an ID, so they know which one's which, basically. They, they can differ, they can tell which one's separate and each ID needs to be unique of course so key is m.id now this is just a demo ID it will actually be a string when we get onto real messages so now that error is gone brilliant there we go so we are rendering our first demo messages in the next video, we'll get on to styling this and making more of it.